up guys? Welcome to Chasing Pelagics. I'm Jeff and this is your SoCal Fishing Forecast for Thursday, March 28th. And um, we're going to start with some uh, some newer news here. Come around the corner. Uh, we have the Rockfish opener here on April 1st. And lo and behold, your favorite department, Fish and Game, has decided to cut your uh, your red or vermilion rockfish limit down to two from four uh, for the 2024 season. And um, a lot of people not happy about it. Uh, halibut was also on the table. Um, that's been put on hold for now. Um, but I think the most d disappointing thing here that you're going to hear from anglers as well uh, is that they cut the recreational limit in half, but there is no changes to the commercial limit. So if you're really doing a proper stock assessment and you need to reduce uh, reduction and properly managing the fishery, there should be a reduction in commercial and recreational limits. If that is what you're truly, truly doing backed by science and your accurate assessment of fish stocks um, doesn't appear that that's happening, and it was uh, you know just a a theory that it needed to be done. So I, I wanted to go back and look at <clears throat> this is your rockfish totals over the last years, and this is conducted by nine seven six tuna based on uh, landing reportings from recreational fishing fishermen, and uh, you know twenty twenty three didn't look that much different than twenty twenty two. Or 2021 uh, and some of those previous years we caught a lot more fish so I'm a little confused as the action of Department of Fish and Game and um, are they really acting in the, you know the best insight and are they really acting based on science and my conclusion is no and we're going to continue to see this uh, moving forward here and usually there's, there's the other half of this is usually tied to some type of dollar amounts or someone is, you know, influencing uh, people that are in charge, whether it be politicians or th things like that. And, you know, if you want to check out this article, by the way, it's in uh, Saltwater Sportsman this month. I'll leave a link in the comment section as well. Jim, Jim Hendricks put this together uh, and it's, it's, it's very, very detailed. Um, but, you know, and in, in, uh, going back to some of the changes that happened last year before this, uh, salmon fishing was put on hold due to, uh, they alleged that the three-year drought from the La Nina uh, had reduced flows in the rivers. They let out water out of some more of the lakes that was warmer, killed a lot of the salmon spawn, which... You know, there's probably some science that backs a lot of that up. Um, and us as recreational anglers said, okay, salmon's done for the year. That's fine. And now this doesn't affect a lot of SoCal people, but the NorCal people, this is their, their bread and butter. Um, so when you go recreational fishing, um, what else is really open up there? Well, halibut's open. Fishing for reds is open, right? These are... It's what they have available to them. Now, the last couple of years are starting to see a little bit more bluefin up there. Um, but again, that's all very weather dependent. Uh, <laughs> and you, you've seen the winds uh, we showed them last year. Um, not very friendly for bluefin fishing in your, your windows to actually fish for them. Although they have caught some already this year. are very small. Um, and I, I, I bring this up and I, I like to point out that this... As, as much as people want to say, you know, this is a Democrat or Republican thing. No, this is happening everywhere. Um, it's not just California. I can tell you firsthand. Uh, I've been going to Alaska for almost 15 years now. And every year it gets tougher and tougher and tougher. And things change and they get tighter and tighter and tighter. And in the last five years, I've seen quite a few things change. Are they seeing depleted numbers in salmon? They absolutely are. Uh, you cannot even catch a king salmon on the Kenai River anymore. That's, that's been uh, disallowed for recre recreational fishing. Um, 
but like most of you probably watched, um, you know, uh, Deadliest Catch, and you've seen the the commercial crab fishery, which is very highly regulated. They do a pretty good job with that. Um, maybe you've seen uh, the Pollock industry that commercially fishes for McDonald's. Um, are you aware that they're almost all trawlers and dragging the bottom and they create a crazy amount of bycatch? And, um, you know, this is really brought to my attention from one of the places I used to go fishing on the Anvik River. And we used to have insane runs of chum salmon. And they also get sockeye and kings. And guess what? Those, uh, those stocks of salmon are probably about 10% of what they were uh, five to six years ago. And it's probably going to put a lot of people out, out of business. There's a lot of small fishing lodges up there. They don't have a lot of money uh, to try and fight these things. But uh, I was brought to a group called Stop Alaskan Trawler Bycatch on Facebook. And um, you're going to find some pretty alarming facts here. Um, this is from one of the moderators from March 14th. In seven days, 2,435 king salmon were tossed overboard for waste. 79 metric tons of halibut tossed over for waste. 78 metric tons of herring. 7,800 crab. This is in seven days. Okay? That's, that's insane. Uh, Do you know that last year they caught 11 killer whales in drawling nets? 10 of them died. They were able to su successfully release one of them. Um, and you think as a native Alaskan or a recreational fisherman in Alaska, you know, there's a lot of rules when it comes to, to fishing and fishing game up there. And uh, they don't come with a lot of penalties for recreational fishermen. But you got a commercial fishing license and you're a dragger and you, uh, you like to floss the government, make sure that your business stays in, in line. And guess what? They've been doing just fine. And uh you know, this is just starting to get the light shined on it in the last couple of years. But there's always the other half of this equation. And I'm not saying commercial fishing is bad. There needs to be sustainable ways to fish it. Trawling is not one of them. Very clear. Um, but you're going to run into the same thing in, uh, in, in California. So I know you're going to say, well, California is a Democrat state. Well, Alaska is very much Republican. Uh, you're seeing the same thing happen on lands and lakes. Look at Moab. They're just trying to close uh, a whole bunch of trails out there. Another Republican state. So it's not really a, a left or right thing. This is uh, ulterior motives from whoever is on the other side of these. And a lot of these things are being funded by uh, nonprofits. They have a big bankroll. They don't have to disclose where they get their, their donations from. You know, they have to disclose where they spend it, but they don't have to disclose where they got the money from. So... Um, you're in for a lot of fight over the next couple of years, especially in California, whether it be MPAs, uh, fishing regulations, and things like that. So I, I just ask you that um, if you can't donate to one of these organizations like CCA or All Waters or uh, Back East, we have uh, you know Captains for, for Clean Water as well. Um, you you got to use your voice and and let let things be heard uh, because if you don't. It's all going to be gone. Um, and I, I just wanted to express uh, the importance of it. Like I said, uh, if you can't you know, donate to one of these organizations, for example, uh, uh, on this group, there is a, a meeting actually this Friday, deadline to turn in your comments <clears throat> in regards specifically to it. But you can scroll through this group. You can read about all the things that are happening. Um, but there's a lot more to it. I put a link to the GoFundMe for the nonprofit that actually runs this group. Uh, I've I've already donated. Um, I've already sent my my notes into the meeting that's actually on Friday uh, in the C2 section. If you want to get more specific about salmon bycatch, um, but it's it's gonna it, it already affects halibut up there as well. Um, for example, uh, during COVID, uh, the halibut limit in Alaska. I'm just gonna give you an example. There's there's a slot limit. Uh, basically, uh, a fish over 72 inches is like 220 pounds, roughly. Um, a fish that's 50 inches is probably about 60 pounds, 65 pounds uh, up, up there. 
any fish between at the time during COVID was 50 inches to 72 inches is considered a commercial catch only if you caught one in, in that section uh, or size range, you'd have to release it unless you bought a, a commercial gap tag, which is about four to five hundred dollars per year for one fish. Okay, one fish. So if you did happen to catch that really sick fish that was right in that size range, now uh, you're able to harvest it. Otherwise, you're going to be forced to release it. Um, and it goes back to, you know, what is what is really sustainable? Um, you know, we see this with tuna. If you want to get this for uh, your own uh, way to, to think about this. But have you ever seen a 71-inch halibut? How do you plan on measuring that? Because you're not going to measure that. <laughs> you're not going to measure a 200 pound halibut on the side of a boat and decide or not whether you're going to you're going to harvest it or let it go. That's not happening. So it's it's already very impractical uh, practice as it is. Uh, after COVID, they lowered that uh, upper slot limit to 40 inches. Uh, so now you're looking at about a 45 pound fish, 50 pound fish right in there. Um, guess what? Same thing this year, uh, still 40 inches and uh, you can no longer fish on Fridays for halibut. If you catch a halibut on a Friday, gotta let it go. Um, did this affect the commercial halibut fishermen? Absolutely not. But um, do you think it had a pretty significant impact on all those recreational fishing lodges in Southeast Alaska? Yeah, that's a big deal. You imagine trying to tell your customer that's been coming there every year, hey, um, can't fish for Fridays on halibut unless you want to buy a $450 gaff tag. So uh, you're going to see a lot of this in California. I think it's coming, uh, whether it's going to be jacking up the price of a fishing license or some type of tag permit to catch certain fish. Um, this stuff's coming, guys. So make sure that you're using your voice and expressing the importance because <clears throat> one day I want, I want to be able to take my kids fishing and have some safe experiences, you know, whether it be in Alaska or California or anywhere else I've been. Uh, and just really, you know, get to share that with them, and, and it's important. So, obviously, always take, you know, what you're going to use and need, and, and obviously practice some some conservation. But, um, yeah, it's really really important. Uh, but getting back to the rockfish opener, uh, so again, two fish, you must have a descending device on your boat, or you will be ticketed if you're fishing for rockfish. Just Another way to raise money, DFG is an organization. They like to raise money, so make sure you got that. They'll keep you uh, mostly out of uh, trouble. And then obviously uh, the typical MPAs and make sure you have a copy of your fishing license, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, you know, that's how it's going to go. All right, looking at this week's weather here, uh, again, darn rainstorms. But this one is going to dump. It looks like... Uh, Two to three inches of rain for uh, most places down here in Southern California. So that's good. Ain't going to hurt nobody. Uh, not as much wind with this one. And we'll give you a good whip here. Uh, so here's Thursday. Looking pretty darn nice still. we got a couple of boats going out uh, between now and the weekend. They're trying to get uh, on this back on this bluefin after the blow. Um, but yeah, we got some really... Just nice, nice, you know, spring winds here. Nothing, nothing raging through Friday. I'll speed this up a little bit and then come Saturday with that rain. So we're going to start with south winds, uh, not going to hurt the water temps. South wind is not going to hurt. We talked to us before Coriolis effect. So do not worry about the south wind. As we move into Saturday, see that front start to come through. We're going to start getting a little bit more of a westerly flow. As soon as this thing moves through here. And there's the eye of it that you can see right here. Coming into Sunday. Again, south wind. And then Monday goes right past us. Offshore light. Back to our light wind conditions. For the remaining of the week. So this one is not going to hurt the water temps, which is good news because the last one actually did a little bit of damage here. We got down to 59.60. There's a couple hot spots. You know, we still got this warm stuff down here below. Um, again, yellow, green, 61, 62. Catalina up front. It's looking a little warm here. So uh, not all's dead. 
uh, I expect a pretty good continuation uh, of a nice spring here as well. Uh, if you caught earlier this week, I pointed out uh, a post from 2015 of the Dana Point buoy. Uh, I wish it was still there, but the Coast Guard has uh, already removed it since then, decommissioned it, which is the same thing they're trying to do to the Newport uh, buoy as well. I'm trying to make it a virtual buoy instead of an actual buoy. And I prefer actual buoys. I like to see the hard data. So um, keep that out on the radar. But anyways, 2015, this date, the water temp on the Dana Point buoy is 68 degrees. So it's a full eight degrees warmer than what we're seeing right now. Even though we had 62 last week, six degrees, that's a pretty big jump. Um, so uh, the, the, again, like as I mentioned last week, the hopes of seeing a 2015 like uh, El Nino this year, not gonna happen the way it's going. But it doesn't mean fishing won't be good. We had pretty good last three years. And uh, yeah, we've already had a pretty good early start this year, early March, so can't complain about that. <clears throat> But uh, let's look at this little chlorophyll here, 3 day chart. Big difference than what we looked at last week. Down south is still looking pretty good. Uh, we got some blocky patches here from satellites and clouds and stuff like that. But this is more of what I was anticipating uh, the spring season looking like. A lot of greened up water from the wind, not a big deal. But down here, still looking okay. Uh, let's switch back to our bottom detail here. All right, so let's talk about fishing. Uh, no one's really been out at the Channel Islands since uh, the last storm came through. Uh, there was a little bit of squid around, but again, nothing really going on. You can start to see a lot more reports coming after the first when people, A, the storm has passed, B, rock fishing season is available. So you see a lot more boats out, a lot more eyes on the water, and you kind of get a lot better idea of what's going on. Still a couple boats uh, finishing up repowers and coast guard inspections and all those things that they do over winter time so uh catalina same thing going on no reports recently the water on the backside got pretty tore up you can probably still find a halibut around somewhere uh but generally speaking things are slow and that's gonna go with santa barbara and nick no one's made the venture out here to check this stuff out uh there has been still a couple people fishing for those halibuts uh you know out here up front in front of uh, LA Harbor, uh, good size ones. So uh, if you're bored, you don't want to go far. Looking for a little uh, little tug, uh, halibut might be uh, what you're looking for. And also, it's typically pretty good fishing down here, Santa Free on that shelf. <clears throat> you get you're gonna, you're gonna have to bounce ball and cover some ground, but this would be a good time if you don't want to run far, especially after the storm. San Clemente Island uh, again. No one has come to look at this island. Um, hopefully better than the last couple of years. It was pretty, uh, pretty rough. Miss those glory days. It was really good. Uh, Coronado's, uh, not much looked at again either. Um, <clears throat> there is no two rockfish limit in Mexico. Just a reminder. So if you're looking at to do some cod hopping, um, you know, pick up a, uh, a Mexican fishing license, and you can do that as well. No weird depth limits as well. So that is also an option. Uh, in regards to those bluefin tuna, uh, I heard a lot of feedback after those first couple of boats that went down there last week. Uh, they were they were far. Um, so here's the lower 500, the bumps. Um, but they were... The catcher's mitt, like way down here. This is like oh, 100, 110 miles, depending on which part you're fishing. Um, this was all night fishing. Uh, they did get some during the day, but it wasn't that great. Uh, they did put up the kite on the way back, and they caught fish most of the way home. We had that wind come through. So based on you know what I'm seeing with this green water here, which is also going to land up on your SST here. Let me go back to the three day. You got this nice blob of water here, kind of filling in. But I like the way that the green water stood up. Usually, early season, I always talk about hard lines. To me, that's the most important. Um, this chart isn't going to be super great because it's missing a lot of holes in it. But you can kind of see how this is working up here. 
And uh, I'd start like matching hard lines of chlorophyll and water temps along with structure and double 220, 295, 288. This is right, this is where I'm starting. You can look through here, uh, but after that one, you're probably not gonna see much until you get down to about this far. And that's still 80 mile run at least. So long ways for the private boat guys still, but uh, if you can't get out there, Make sure you get your stuff ready because uh, another couple weeks looks like it'll be a lot closer to home. Maybe it'll be up at the upper hidden, lower hidden in the next two weeks or so. But that should be your best bet. Uh, again, as always, if you'd like to support the channel, please visit chasingprojects.com. We got plenty of tackle up there for you. It's very focused for Southern California. I don't have any, you know, spotty bass stuff up there. We're uh, an offshore focused uh, company. And uh, our stuff is really focused on Southern California. Uh, we are working on some apparel. Uh, been working on a couple of designs for the last few months and just trying to get those finalized so I can start getting them all printed out. But uh, yeah, we try and try and do some more of our own stuff versus everyone else's stuff. Um, it always seems to work out better. But that's it for this week, guys. Appreciate you tuning in, and uh, we'll see you then. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out our website and online store at chasingprojects.com. And make sure you share the stoke.